Hey rock stars, what's going on? SE Rocks here, and I know it's been a while. It's been a while since I have made some videos for YouTube. And for uh, you kids out there that don't know, that was uh, stained. It's been a while. Terrible version. Um, so we got a new segment here. We're going to do a Rocks Ranks, where I'm going to rank my top five, my personal opinion, top five of many different things. Today is going to be my top five bassists, guitar bassists, um, not of all time, but like of my generation and my musical taste. So a lot of you guys probably won't even know who these guys are and you'll probably want to argue. Go ahead and drop in the comments who you think your favorite bass players are. I'm sure I'll get some different uh, people than I'm going to list. So I'll get right into it. I'm not sure if I'm going to go down straight five like and end on number one. Number five, I'm going to go with Matt Freeman, bass player for Rancid. You guys don't know who Rancid is. They're an amazing punk band from East Bay. Um, he's one of the best punk bass players, if not the best punk bass player um, of all time. Uh, growing up, I obviously was a big fan of punk rock music, and they Rancid was just a different type of band. They were more bass guitar driven, which was really cool. You know, they kind of had the ska guitars, and then Matt Freeman's bass lines were just phenomenal. Um, if you don't know of Matt Freeman or Rancid, go check out the song um, "The Journey to the End of East Bay." And that it starts off with an amazing bass line. It was one of the bass lines that I always wanted to learn um, as I was growing up and learning to play bass. A uh, short story there. Um, I was in a band when I was 15. I guess you could call it a band. I don't know. We tried playing music a couple times. Um, I think I was 15 or 16. I had never played an instrument before. I told the guys, yeah, I can play bass guitar. So we showed up to this little trailer in the middle of nowhere that had a drum set set up. Um, Chris Warden was our drum player. Uh, Kyle Haggard was guitar, and I was attempting to play the bass guitar. So that's how that started. I never played a bass guitar before, but then I learned how to read tabs. Um, started getting decent at bass, played in a couple bands, um, mainly punk stuff, just local, played a couple parties. That was fun. Um, and as I grew up, I, I learned to play a little bit more of the electric guitar. I still, I still love bass. There's just something about bass. I don't know if it's because it's the first guitar I ever played, but I still love to pick up the bass and just play some old bass lines like, uh, oh, what is, there's a couple from Goldfinger that are really good. Um, ska bands really, all ska bands, most ska bands have really good bass players because ska is really bass guitar driven. So go check out some ska for some good, good bass lines. Um, next up, number four, Lemmy from Motorhead. Um, again, some of you guys probably aren't even going to know this, but uh, Lemmy was the lead bass player, I guess you would call it, and vocals for the band Motorhead, a phenomenal metal band. Um, I guess I'd throw him on here, not because of his uh, technical ability on bass, although he was really good, but the fact that he played great music, sung and played bass guitar. Um, I, something I was never able to do was to play guitar and sing at the same time. I just don't have the rhythm and coordination to do both. It's very difficult. Yeah, number three, we'll go with Chris Novoselic. Novoselic, whatever you guys want to call him. The bass player from Nirvana. Again, not the most technically amazing bass player, but again, this is my list, my top five of my generation and of bands I listen to. Nirvana obviously was a huge influence for me. Um, still my top band of all time. And Chris, his presence really made that three-piece something that you'd want to watch like live shows you go back and watch live nirvana shows um on youtube and he just brought an energy that really played well into dave's drums and kurt's vocals and guitar playing bass bass line for lithium and in bloom really most of the songs off of Nevermind. the bass lines are simple but they fit so well with the guitar that uh, Kurt is playing. So I had to throw him on this list. Again, he's not technically amazing, and I'm sure there's there's bassists out there that you guys would argue are so much better, but it's my list, so I put him in number three. Number two. Uh, it was so hard to pick between this one and my number one. I'm going to go with Les Claypool of Primus, Oysterhead, Colonel Claypool's Bucket of 
Bernie Brains, I think it was. Bernie Brains. Um, Fearless Frying... <laughs> Fearless Flying Frog Brigade. Try to say these names like five times fast. He was in some crazy name bands. Oliver wants up here. He might be in the video. Uh, yep. This is Oliver. He has no balls now. We got his balls cut off last week. Maybe down, bud. <laughs> um, Les Claypool was so hard not to put number one. Listen to Primus, man. Any of that bass guitar in Primus is just... He's so amazing. The things that he can do with a bass guitar are like the things Tom Morello can do with an electric guitar. Just some of the sounds he can get out of a bass guitar. You'd be like, how is that... How is that possible? And he's been in so many bands. He's inspired so many people. So many Primus songs come to mind. Uh, Too Many Puppies. I love Too Many Puppies. Uh, Welcome to This World from Brain Scan, one of my favorite movies. Um, I think, actually, that's when I heard Primus for the first time. And I had to go, you know, I was like, man, who's this band? So you have to scroll through the credits on the end of the movie. And it said, Primus, Welcome to This World. I was like, okay. You know, this is this is amazing. So Les Claypool is my number two. I would almost tie him up with the guy I'm going to put at number one. A lot of you guys will argue with me. I mean, the whole two of you that watch this video and have no idea who the guys I'm talking about are. But my number one is Ryan Martini. I believe is how you pronounce his last name. The bass player for Mudvayne. Uh, metal band, new metal, whatever you want to call it. It's just amazing metal music. And his bass playing is just so sick, man. Um, listen to the bass lines off LD50. Go out and watch videos of him, you know, his bass solos. He does run-throughs on YouTube. Go watch any Mudvayne live. Um, if you're not into the metal or new metal, he plays like in this funk band called Soften the Glare. Go check that out. Um, it's funky. It shows how good he is at bass guitar and how he can run scales and it just shows his versatility. He can play fucking new metal. He can play metal. He can play funk. Um, he's just so good. He can, you know, slap and pull. He can slide. Uh, just a phenomenal bass player, man. So, yeah, that's my top five. This rocks ranks of bass players of my generation. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Next week, I hope to put together a new one. It'll be movie-based, I think. I'm just not sure what yet. So thanks, you guys, for the support. I appreciate watching my videos. Like and subscribe. Click the thing for the notifications. Um, I'm excited. I'm going to be seeing Mudvayne here in July. So many bands. Mudvayne, Hatebreed again. Fuck yeah, Hatebreed. Um, D.E.D., Dead, whatever they call themselves. We're going to Upheaval, so I'm going to see a bunch of bands, but those are really my top. New one next week. Rocks, ranks, top five. Keep rocking and stay true.